Hey guys, so I went to two other pre-releases and uh, before I started flooding out in Houston and this was my FNM line. I know I haven't done an update in a while, but I felt like, hey, why not um, do an update on FNM line because why not take it? So after I won my first playmat, it was just kind of like, oh, I don't really need more playmats. I'll see how this deck does. The deck did pretty well. It was 7-2. So it went 4-0 to win a play mat, and then it went uh, three and two to lose. That was a bigger event to lose a play mat. Um, but overall, I was able to go ahead and make some additions. So you have 18 lands, it's just basic mountains. Uh, obviously, I would love fetch lands, but on a budget, remember this is my budget. A lot of people ask why I don't have like the optimized cards. This is because it is budget. So you have 18 lands, uh, you have Thunder Breaks, you would want to add one more, but I'll show you. It's kind of crowded at four. Firebird, bird. Let me talk about this card. This card is interesting. I love the fact that it has haste. Flying haste makes it really relevant. Um, the haste part, especially in the body and landfall is only kind of, you're going to attack with it anyway. Landfall is only bonus. Dragon's very good, but you really just want one of them. Outburst, love it. Flame Wake Phoenix. I don't know how I feel about this card. This card seems good, but I don't like the fact that uh, it goes... I don't like the fact that you need Ferocious. We don't really have that many Ferocious triggers. Uh, obviously, Goblin Piledriver, as you will see later on. Uh, Exquisite Firecraft. This card is expensive for some reason, but I don't, have, I don't have the money to buy it or trade for it, given that this is a budget series where I started with $10. I started with the free trial decks, and now we're here. For, um, oh, Goblin Power Driver is very good. Obviously, you have a ton of goblins, uh, token producers, and just getting, like, in there. Like, I'll show you. Getting in there with just a 1-1 one, one Goblin is not bad. A 1-1 one, one Goblin that triggers him is not bad. <sighs> one of the best cards in Mono Red. There's not much I need to say about this card, except it is semi snapcaster esque it's not snapcaster but it kind of in the same role assuming you can play the card it does give you gas which is hard to do in red wild slash is very good bell striker is very good goblin glory chaser i love this card this card is really good in this deck if it hits some it becomes a 2-2 which is very good um it's a 2-2 and as long as it has renown it has menace so it can't be blocked except by two or more creatures so it will be able to attack quite often and it will trigger goblin pile driver so this with goblin pile driver seems very good to me um and it has played out very good so i didn't understand how to play the deck until like Berserker, where you can kind of put a mana sink and represent a dash-like creature. I like Berserker better than Zergo, uh, just because late game Zergo is not very good. And obviously this Taylor Swift uh, to round out. The, car the deck is very fast, it is very easy to play, but there's a lot of interactions I didn't realize. Uh, a ton of interactions uh, between the pile driver and just how aggro the pile driver can get. So if people are playing blue, the pile driver, remember, has protection from blue. That is actually kind of relevant because if people are playing blue all the time, and yeah, these are <laughs> the new sleeves which we were able to win. So don't judge me because these were the sleeves we won. So yeah, or we had the option of other sleeves, but like I can't show you the other sleeves. But so um, we won game day. And this is, you know, I'm, I'm doing well. I got $20 in store credit. I got some sleeves. I got some more uh, Taylor Swift's, which I had traded in one way. I think I already had the Abbott's. So uh, overall, if you keep grinding at it with Mono Red, Mono Red is a lot of fun to play sometimes. I would say not every day I would want to play this deck, but or every week. But sometimes I haven't played this deck in over... I want to say almost a month and I'm excited because the deck works well. Again, it went 7-2, it won a play mat, it went 4-0 in one of the game days, so it can win. And especially the blue, it's so funny that blue cannot deal with this deck. If your opponent is playing blue, they can't deal with the deck. If your opponent is playing Mardu 
and they're using something like um I mean, Mantis, like, we can race Mantis. Mantis is blue, and we can race him, and as long as we have enough goblins, we can get enough damage on him, and then we just finish it with a over-the-top dragon of some type. So, I love the deck. I think it is very optimized. I think it is, um, it can be improved, but for a deck that started out at $10 and semi-budget, yeah, it's, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Oh, and I have to show you the sideboard. I totally forgot about that as the video goes on we have a mountain the reason we have a mountain is because it's kind of weird four volleys four impulses we're like really anti-jace like jace doesn't survive four roses and a chandra chandra is kind of good in the outpost seeds that is the cyborg the cyborg is very efficient in my opinion roast takes care of uh, roast does a very good job of taking care of the rhinos which is so prevalent right now Volley takes, does a very good job of taking care of the Mantis, which is very prevalent right now. So you're looking at Mantis, Rhinos, all, all day, all day. The flame, Impulse takes care of the Jaces. So after sideboarding, you get stronger. You get a lot stronger. Very good deck. I think it is positioned incredibly well, and it should do well. I mean, I love it. I love playing it, and I think it's very strong.